the European Accessibility Act will make Europe more accessible for people with disabilities and that is an important step forward if we are able to achieve that. Some of the main challenges I see is finding a common ground between the different national laws considering all the different member states and so we need to be able to find a good harmonization through the law and that would be through the European Accessibility Act. I know people are also concerned about the cost of this but I do believe if we make Europe more accessible then that will benefit everybody in the end because ultimately people with disabilities make up about 10 to 15 percent of the population at the moment and they are excluded at the moment because so many services and goods and buildings are not accessible. If we make all of these things accessible then we will have 10 to 15 percent of the population, people with disabilities, be able to enjoy employment and be able to go to the movies so there is an economic and social benefit to this. Of course, I fully agree that we should avoid creating new barriers, and that is why I am advocating for a functional approach. I believe that we need to set the aims of accessibility and have that be agreed upon, but I also believe that we should not have to tell people how to achieve this aim, or tell the industries how to achieve that aim. I'm not the expert, but as long as they know what the aim is, it is up to them how to execute it, which is why I believe that a functional approach would be better than pre prescribing to these industries and other factors how to achieve it. We also have the concept of universal design in place. I think people don't always realize that. But for example, the iPhone has accessibility features built in. And so that is something that people aren't aware of, but is a fantastic step. And it is an, a step that people can consider as a way to move forward so that everybody is included. I do. I do believe that it will be a win-win-win, a triple win, because if people with disabilities are more included, then that means that's an opportunity for more profits for businesses. And it's also an opportunity for more profits for industries because they can provide more goods and more services. And then the people with disabilities have access to this. It's a win-win-win. And if you look at the United States, they have an Accessibility Act and you can see that it does benefit everyone in society because people with disabilities are no longer excluded. They're able to participate in society. When you exclude 15% of the population, that ultimately does cost us money because then we have to provide separate goods, separate services, and that costs us as well. I do find that it's a shame because the European Accessibility Act is a general principle of accessibility and so that is an overarching idea that we can all agree on that if we all agree that Europe is, a, is able to be made accessible to all then that's where we start. But with the audiovisual media services when they vote against it we Miss to, we miss an opportunity to have a more specified approach to accessibility as well because TV and media does have an obligation and a responsibility to provide services. We run the risk of a, lip, uh, of a loophole if we don't cover AVMS. And as long as we have the organization overall of agreeing to accessibility, we then have a horizontal and a vertical approach, and then it's comprehensive. And that way we avoid loopholes. I am concerned about some misconceptions of what accessibility means by some national governments because if you think well in advance ultimately accessibility doesn't cost money if everything is designed initially 
in the early stages as accessible, then at the end of the day, we don't have to make modifications, accommodations, adjustments, because then everything is accessible. If you have to make adjustments, modifications, ultimately those things do cost more money. If you work within the universal design and you have multi-layers within that, then you do have the ability to make everything accessible. If universal design doesn't cover it, then you can add another layer to make it accessible. But ultimately, the overall idea of universal design is something that will help everybody. Again, an excellent example is how the iPhone has built-in accessibility designs. It's almost common sense. But I know governments are concerned about costs for businesses and industries, but everything is ultimately related. And so I would like to take this opportunity to repeat that exclusion costs us money. If we exclude people, that's an extra cost. And that inclusion benefits everybody at the end of the day.